Hi guys, this is me again with another session of uh, SQL tutorial videos. This time I'm creating a video not exactly suitable for complete beginners, but it's more for, let's say, advanced guys. Guys that maybe had an university or a new apprenticeship to do with databases, but you still are not really getting why does a database behave fast or slow, how can I speed up databases or whatever. We will start with the most common type of tables, that is the cluster table. We want to focus real quick, I try to make it as quick as possible, on the main structure of a table. So what is actually a cluster key? What is a B tree? Okay, let's start with a real quick example, a real sh small tree. A, a B tr a tree especially a B tree, for it stands probably for balance tree. So a tree has always a root node, some intermediate nodes, and some leaves. Okay, a leaf is nothing else than a node that does not branch anymore. Right, so those are all leaves. This is the root, those are intermediate nodes, because they are neither root nor leaves. Okay, imagine you have a table like, um, just a real simple table that has a column ID and it has a column name. And for now it should be the last name. So the create table statement, this is the create table statement. Okay, so let's come back to the uh, actual B3. Okay, for this table now, I created the B tree real quick because it would take too long if I would do it live. So we basically have a two, three B tree. It means we have at, at, uh, at most three, at least two items per node. Of course, this is an example. In a uh, cluster index table has a different amount, uh, kind of B tree, but the principle is the same. Okay, so here have the here have the B tree. So we're basically saying. We find in this, this node says as we find beneath this node, we find every key from one to 10, right? So let's assume we, we are looking for the seven. Then we could, we know that it, uh, ah, I forgot it, it has to stay here, the seven in the middle. So it says from one to exclude seven, you find everything in this first reference and everything else you find in this reference. So since we're using, we're searching for seven, we go this path. So we go this path. Now we add this intermediate node. No, we're looking for the 7. The first information is this, this, that, this, that this node starts with the 7 inclusive. So now you have um, to follow this path. And here we find the 7. So although we have 10 elements, like n is 10, we only needed 1, 2, 3 uh, times to look for a node. We didn't have to look all over 10 items or something like this. Okay, we, uh, this is very easy. So one, two, three, and we found the seven. Instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on and so forth, right? This is the basis of a B tree. And um, complicated it gets when you want to insert or delete data out of it. So if you want to insert, for instance, now here, let's assuming we're inserting a seven here. Okay, let's do this. So if we input something, we would of course have to add the seven here, right? But, uh, the seven here, right? But since it is an inverted node, we have to split it actually. So what happens is we split this node into actually two nodes. So we have four, five, six, seven, six, seven, sorry, here. Okay, but then we also need uh, to work from this intermediate node. So it gets another uh, bucket, another reference, and then we have to change this like, uh, it goes from 6 to 7 or we can also say to 8 meaning excluding 8 of course so we now know that the, that the right branch stayed the same so this works now but imagine if I would uh, enter two new items here so those get filled up and then I have to split this as well eventually if I have to split the root node, I introduce another root node and the whole tree gets another level. Okay, so this is complicated, you see. That's why it's not a, that, that, that's why from time to time a B tree has to be rebuilt. Partly or completely, it depends on the state of your B tree. So this is basically the idea of a B tree. All right, and this is basically how a cluster table is, um, is stored in, in SQL Server. 
So now with the basic understanding of a B-tree, we can dig a little bit deeper into how a SQL Server stores data. SQL Server basically stores data in the exact same way. So for SQL Server we have always data pages. We will talk about data pages in another video in detail. But for now we have just data pages. Imagine them as nodes. We have a, a node here that has intermediate nodes. And from those intermediate nodes, we have leave nodes. And imagine that your data is stored into the leave nodes only. So picture this. In one leave node, it's not just one value, like we had it in the previous example. In one leave node, there can be hundreds of rows, depending on the, how many columns you have in your, in your table, uh, and uh, many more, like variable data type or not, and if so, how, how much filled are those ta data types, and so on and so forth. So per node you can have many, many, many rows, okay? So what in SQL Server is also the case, so we have this structure, like uh, it is linked like a B tree, but it is also linked, that all the leaves are linked in a doubly, doubly linked list, that means um, you can easily uh, navigate forwards and backwards through those uh, through those uh, leaves. Why is this important? Like you do um, this query, select star from sample, then you mean you want to have all. Then the query uh, uh, optimizer or the query executor has no benefit of uh, walking through the tree. Like if it would always have to walk this way, you need one, two, three axes for the first leaf. One, two, three axes for the second. You see, if you have n elements, you need um, you need in general n times the height of your tree, and this is can be very expensive since uh, the height of the tree is uh, also uh, approximately uh, log logarithm from your uh, leaf. This would be logarithm from your uh, leaf uh, number of leaves times your leaves n log n just for a scan this seems to be too much because you know if you just want to scan n elements you only need uh, the complexity of uh, a linear complexity of n because you just go one by one you don't need a complexity of uh, n times logar logarithm from n we don't need this because it's overdue. So because we want to achieve this, we have this doubly linked list in place so that we can just search the first entry and then we go through this list so that we in the end have, of course, a linear complexity for uh, having a whole uh, index scan. Actually, in Oracle or other DBMS systems, this is called a full table scan. In SQL Server, it's called a clustered index scan because a scan is always on this level. If you would traverse like this through the tree, it would be a seek, not a scan. So if you have, if you ever saw execution plan, we will cover execution plans much later. Then uh, remember, remember a cluster that index scan means it just scans everything on the leave node. Okay. So the last thing we want to cover is what is actually saved where. So of course we only have the data in the leave nodes. So that means the actual rows, right? This is a row, of course, this is a row and so on and so forth. Those rows are only stored in the leaves. In the intermediate nodes, there can be many, of course, and many heights, many levels. And in the root node, there's only the key. What does this mean? That means um, if you have a clustered index key that is not integer or that is much wider or that has more columns in it, you fill in many, much more key values in here leading to a b-tree that is much bigger than it should be. So if we, if we would have uh, like several columns here, of course this key, the key is always in the intermediate and the root node. The data is only in the leaf nodes, but still if the key is too wide and not narrow enough, you will have more intermediate nodes than you need because uh, we actually need more nodes to save all the data, all the key length, all the data in it. So please uh, remember to use integer keys or the smallest data type possible in general, of course, because then you can also store more rows in your nodes, more rows per page and so on and so forth. And you know more rows per page means you can achieve more in one I.O. operation. And this is of course good because I.O. operations are, uh, is, are our killer. Yes, it's the slowest that we can have is an I.O. operation. So choose a 
integer data type if it's possible uh, id if uh, you have the uh, if you have no natural key please in, uh, introduce a surrogate key and lay your primary key column on it because you, then you will have a compact b tree that can be qu quickly scanned quickly seeked and quickly queried overall so this is actually basically everything what we want to cover in this lesson we um, just take from it that we have the data in the leaves that we have a tree structure and yeah one thing if you for instance uh, look for um, I told you already for ID 3 we will traverse this key here and we have only in 3 that is the height of the um, that is the height of the B tree which is at worst a uh, logarithm from N we have the data already instead of searching through all of the data this can lead to a B tree height of 3 to 5 even if we have millions of rows in this tree uh, saved on leaf level. This is a very cool thing and that's why the bee tree is, is used. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, please leave comments uh, in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel and if you uh, have any other topic that you want to have to cover, please tell me. Uh, I will make a video about it and explain it very quick. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.